Well, welcome everyone. It is an exciting day for Oklahoma baseball. For only the 10th time in the 112 year history of this prestigious program, Oklahoma has a new head man. Uh, for those of us who have gotten to know Skip so well over the past year, and for everybody in the college baseball world who has gotten to know Skip so well over the past couple of decades, this is certainly an exciting day. It is a day for the OU baseball family to unite. See Coach Seymour is here, Coach Koshell is here today. Um, we are in the not too distant future, going to undergo a multi-million dollar eye-popping renovation at Mitchell Park under head coach Skip Johnson. These are certainly exciting days. And now to introduce the new head baseball coach of the Oklahoma Sooners, please welcome Athletics Director Joe Castiglione. Thank you very much, Toby. We appreciate everything that you do, serving as our voice of so many different things of Oklahoma athletics. We really appreciate you. As Toby said, it truly is a big day for Oklahoma baseball as we start a new era under Skip Johnson. As I look around the room, I see former players, former coaches, current players, current coaches on our staff and other staff members. It just shows you how important um, uniting our family really is. I appreciate you all being here. That show of support is truly vital for our program. In fact, it's important for us to uh, build upon it, to cultivate it as we develop the kinds of resources that our program's going to need as we go forward to pursue championships. As we all know, there's a journey, a process, to developing the skills of individual players and building chemistry of a team. Teams generally take on the personality of their leaders. When we vetted a variety of excellent candidates for this job, we learned a lot of good things about each one of them. I'd like to thank Greg Tipton, uh, some of our head coaches, our staff, that all served uh, in helping throughout the search process. Really appreciate your input. And we wanted someone who had been part of winning championships, who had been to Omaha. We found it in Arthur Johnson, his passion, his purpose, his vision, his plan continually impressed us. Okay, I see a few of you. You're like, I think he just said the wrong name, Arthur. There are a lot of people in here who didn't know his real name was Arthur, did you? <laughs> You're wondering, how do you get Skip out of Arthur? Well, not to digress, but as the story goes, they had a neighbor that was named Skip. And when uh, his mother was pregnant with Arthur, Skip's older brother would pat his mother's belly and would say, there's my Skipper, there's my Skipper. And so while he was born Arthur, from that moment he was always known as Skip. Regardless of how he got his nickname, we studied and learned a lot about his relationship building skills, eye for talent, his player development and knowledge of the game. All those that he would encounter came away loving him and being inspired by his own spirit. They trusted him, they listened to him, they considered him a brother, a teacher, a mentor, obviously a coach. He embodies the kinds of characteristics that we totally believe are the strength of our Sooner Magic culture and what we believe is important to the formula for our ultimate success. Now, don't let his down-the-earth demeanor trick you into thinking that he isn't a competitor. He might try to trick you that thinking in that, but he is fierce competitor. You're not going to out-hunt him. You're not going to outfish him. And believe me, don't try to go bowling with him. <laughs> um, whether it's 
Rolling strikes or throwing strikes? Skip is a fierce competitor, and he conveys that to all those around him. So when we put all these pieces together and all the other characteristics that we believed was important in hiring the next coach, we realized that we actually had the best person right here, as it would be in the bullpen. So I guess it's only proper that I turn to Skip and I give you the sign and ask you that you now come out, sprint to the mound, and take over the baseball as our new head coach. So won't you join me in welcoming the new skipper, Skip Johnson. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. And before we get uh, going into some of Skip's remarks, I'd like to ask Kathy, Tyler, and Garrett to join me at the, at the podium. We'd just like a picture because, as you know, family is the root of everything we do. So we can, we can stand out here and present this jersey. Here, Skip, you can get in the mix. Here we go, you got my baby. Thank you. Well, following those two guys, I mean, it's probably going to be pretty tough. Uh, they can really talk, and it's uh, pretty awesome. But um, I want to thank the OU Board of Regents, President Boren, Athletics Director Joe Castiglione, Senior Associate Athletic Director Greg Tipton, and for having the conviction and the faith in me to carry this program on to, uh, I don't know about bigger and better things, but to carry this program on and make sure that we develop players and and lead these good, lead these young men and student athletes to better you know uh, uh, bigger and better things um, first off I want to thank my family for all the things that they've done it's been a long time coming 27 years of college baseball and my wife Kathy Tyler and Garrett uh, Been a lot of long nights, probably waiting on me to come in from the road, putting 370,000 miles on my truck, or being gone for 27 days in a row recruiting and just trying to uh, make ends meet when I was in junior college in Corsicana, Texas. But I want to thank you guys for being here for me. Uh, the next thing uh, I want to kind of start is uh, I want to thank um, Ryan Gaines, Mike Anderson, Dylan Stanley, and Birdo for being here, <clears throat> and Robert Fulton for being here for me, uh, and to talk about the family over at the baseball field and w what we've done um, to our players. Relationships is everything with me. I think it's uh, – you can go win national championships, um, but it's the relationships that matter to me. It's getting a phone call at 2 o'clock in the morning or the guy's struggling in professional baseball or he comes in your office and talks to you. It's, that's what matters. We can win championships. I, there's no doubt I want to win championships as bad as anybody. But um, the relationships mean everything to me. Always have and always will. That's the only reason I'm here the relationships I've built before. A player development program means a lot to me as well. I think the biggest thing for us on an everyday basis, if we're going to engage with our eyes and our heart as coaches, and we're going to encourage uh, young men positively and give them every opportunity to get better and making sure that the team comes first in every form and fashion. Um, the love and care of players are very important to me because without these guys, uh, there's no us. And that's the only reason I'm up here. I got a lot of texts last night from former players and uh, 
I just texted back and said, you guys made it happen as well as I did. Um, and if you leave your mark on a kid's heart, you carve your name on a kid's heart, you can carve it on marble. And a lot of former coaches that are here, I appreciate it. They understand what I'm talking about and former players because the ultimate go is to carve your name on their heart and then marble because it's important to me that you guys are here as well to understand that um, I'm going to try to carry on the tradition that you left, the mark that you left. Um, to all my mentors, to kind of tell a story, uh, my high school coach, Coach Blair, he uh, made me love the game every day. Um, I was at Denton High School, me and Tim Tadlock, at, he's at Texas Tech. He was a sophomore and I was a senior. He made us love the game every day to come out there and practice and, and uh, get better. Then I got the opportunity to sign a scholarship with Ranger Junior College for $250. Wasn't a lot of money, but I knew uh, that it was a place where I didn't have an air conditioner in my dorm room or a heater and there were crickets everywhere. And, and I, I learned a lot about what mental toughness was about. It was uh, important to me at that time. And then I got the opportunity to go play for one of the uh, greatest mans I've met is uh, Al Ogletree and Reggie Treadaway. These guys are mentor, mentors of mine. They're very important to me because they taught me how to teach the game and direct each other one step at a time because teaching the game it's fun. You see these guys that are out here that teach the game, but it's more about learning one step at a time because that's what learning is. And these guys taught me the patience of it in it. Um, and then getting the opportunity from Bob McElroy and Keith Thomas. Keith Thomas is a former OU alum that played football here and coached here. These guys gave me the opportunity at Navarro to coach where I got to learn the failures and the success in the, of, of the game by getting to practice seven, eight, nine hours a day. I know there uh, wasn't any compliance rules, if there's any compliance guys out there in junior college. You know, it was, it was about making them better. So uh, um, I learned a lot at uh, uh, Navarro, you know, of what to do and what not to do. And then I got the opportunity to coach for a great man named Augie Garrido. And I learned a lot from him and Tommy Harmon along the way. The pressures of the game is really what I learned there. I really thought I knew what I was doing when I went there and come to find out I didn't know. So I had to really make sure that I practiced those pressures that those kids are going to go through. If we're going to ask those guys to do something, we need to go through that pressure. And um, I really learned a lot there. To all the alumni, my door's always open. Um, I want you to come. I want to visit, I want to visit with you come to the bullpen, come around. These guys want to know what you went through when you were here. It's important our players to understand that you left a mark here and we're going to carry on the tradition and we're going to carry the torch. Um, to the guys that sit out on the berm, um, it's very important that you guys are there for us as well. The red couch guy that sits out there that we have fun with, have to send the policemen out there every day. But we love you guys and for the yard birds that sit up in the, the stands that yell and scream at us about throwing strikes, just make sure you understand they're amateurs too. They're not professionals and we're going to do everything we can. And we don't have a joystick in the dugout to make them, make them swing and miss it or make them hit the ball with a, uh, some kind of shot collar on their neck. But uh, our product on the field is going to be, going to be tough. Um, guys are going to get after it. Um, we're going to play hard every day. Um, and that's the expectation. That's accountability. Uh, <clears throat> and I, I'd be failed to mention this is, um, you know, I learned about OU from Tim Tadlock um, and the OU brand a long time ago when he was here and I was, I was at a junior college. He taught me, he told me that this place was had a high expectation in what it was about. Um, the atmosphere was a family-owned business, and 
I, I was here for a year. I believe it. I know how important Oklahoma athletics and Oklahoma baseball is to um, the state of Oklahoma. Um, I built a lot of relations here, relationships here the year that I was here and continue to want to build those relationships as we go on in the near future. And I really appreciate it and I'm honored to carry the torch for the University of Oklahoma as the head baseball coach. Thank you. Johnson and Joe will be happy to field questions from the media. Skip, when you were uh, talking about days on the road and your family, it, it occurred to me you, you've got to love the game to uh, spend that kind of time away. And that seems to be a thing about people in baseball, that it's a life. So just, why baseball? <laughs> I think, you know, my dad was a uh, um, a big football guy, and and it's kind of funny how uh, uh, I grew up. I grew up in a bowling alley, and I was really good at football. Um, but we practiced so hard, he kind of made me hate baseball, so to speak. And I kind of started loving football, or, or hate, hating football, and I kind of started loving baseball. It was I had a little league coach, me and Tim, uh, in seven up. He was hair lip. You know, he'd call you on the phone and go, you don't know who this guy is. <laughs> and so he kind of, we were around him a lot. He'd pick us up. He'd run us through, he'd give us a five-gallon bucket and run us through the orchard and tell him, meet, meet us on the other end. And we were around him a lot and take ground balls with him. He'd throw to us uh, uh, Patty. I see Patty back there underhanded in softball. He was a, he was a fast-pitch softball pitcher. And that's how he, we took BP. So, you know, he kind of taught us to love the game as we, and we're, baseball is, uh, it's a game of failure. It doesn't, doesn't care how you feel. I can tell you that. And uh, uh, I love it, and, and it reveals your character. Skip, you're so well known as a pitching coach. Talk about, though, your philosophy offensively and what, what you like to see in your offensive clubs. Well, I think the uh, good pitching coaches always look at offensive guys. Uh, when, I, when I got into it, and I, I'm real passionate about my mentors, Reggie Treadaway and Al Ogletree. Um, when, I, when I got down there uh, at Pan American, it was a little bit of a culture shock. And so, um, Coach, I got there two weeks late because we just got through winning the Stan Usual World Series. And Coach Treadaway says, you want to be a pitching coach, uh, sit next to me and learn how to hit. And so, pitching coaches, have, they're really intrigued with uh, offensive guys. Because you, you know, being a great pitcher, you've got to be able to try to throw two pitches for strikes in any count, hold, hold runners and field your position. And offensively, if they put pressure on you, you get nervous from that. And if you get nervous, then you're, you're screwing up the timing of the pitcher. And you, you look at the offensive guys that are screwing up the timing of the pitcher, and then you, Hey man, I'm, I, we got to face these guys today. Make sure we do long holds. Make sure we get leadoff hitters out. So you really start regurgitating that, that stuff with the with the pitcher to make sure he understands he's got to be on top of his game. Skip, I imagine two years ago you could envision being a head coach. Would you ever think it would happen here? Um, no, <laughs> no. I, I envisioned being a head coach at. But a head, what is a head coach? I mean, really a coach is, is a guy that builds relationships. I mean, you know, I tell, our, I tell the pitchers every night, hey, every game's a Friday night game. Tuesday game's a Friday night game because we, we want to win. And as a head coach, it's just a title. I mean, that's all it is. It's not a testimony because testimonies are more important than titles. I mean, I believe that in my heart because it's about teaching and developing. And if, in, uh, and if we teach and develop, then the championships will come. And, ever, oh, sorry, Skip. Go ahead. Did you ever wonder, though, if this would happen for you after all that time at Navarro and a decade at Texas? You know, I was at Navarro for uh, uh, 16 years and got, the, got a phone call, call from Coach Garrido and said, meet me down here. So we're driving around Austin. It's huge. Navarro's like real little. 
and we're in a we're in a we're in a Porsche, and I'm like, uh. so we're talking about offense. He's showing me these houses. I'm like, man, there ain't nothing like that. It looks like in Corsicana. <laughs> so, so I go. He puts me up in the Four Seasons, and I call Kathy. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. I mean, there's like a, I felt like one of the Three Stooges in the in the bathroom. There's powders and cream everywhere, and I'm like thinking. <laughs> I called Kathy, I said, I don't think I can do this. And, uh, uh, you know, because Navarro was very important to me. I mean, it was uh, where I started, but I called her. I went back, went to the south end zone, and I come out and I look at this big football field, and I go, if I don't do this, I'm making a mistake. And that's where it kind of started. And when I got there, it was big. But it's something that we develop every day, um, it's making it small. It's like Groundhog every day. If you get in a routine and, and, and you schedule and make people understand this is the details matter. If, if Tim Tadlock doesn't sort of point you in the direction of Norman, where are you today? Are you still coaching in Texas? Or where, where would, would you envision yourself had he not? Probably in professional baseball and uh, uh, teaching in professional baseball. There's nothing wrong with that either because I like that. I have a bunch of professional baseball players that I work with today, and uh, um, I'm blessed to work with those guys. And I think that's what probably would have led me down that road. So were you, were you close? I mean, if, with the situation in Texas, had you, uh, with the way that that shook out, were you ready to almost get out of college baseball at that time? Uh, no, I mean. the right opportunity that is? Yeah, no, no, I mean, I went and talked to Mike Perrin, the athletic director at the University of Texas, and. And we sat down and talked about it. And they were on a search committee hiring guys. Um, and I, you know, I was, I, ha I would have talked to the head coach, but when uh, um, Pete and Tipton called and Ryan Gaines called about the job here, I was excited. I was actually up in New England when uh, I was watching Tyler play, my oldest son. He was in the New England Collegiate League. And I was excited because I know the tradition. One of my, Big mentors is Stan Meeks here. He's here today. Um, great pitching guy. And so uh, I was excited to, to, to uh, see that. And uh, um, and the opportunity was was there. They were hungry for – and when I got here, I had to build relationships. They were hungry to learn about pitching. And I was excited. I think um, I might have stayed there. I don't know. But I'd have been in baseball somewhere. If not, I'd just go, you know, guide deer hunt or something. <laughs> Joe, could you talk about, you know, Skip's been one of the best pitching coaches for a long, long time, and everybody knew that. And he was a great head coach at the Merrill, but could you talk about what you saw in him that told you that he could be a great head coach at Oklahoma? The ability to teach uh, and recruit and to inspire people around him. Um, can't do any of those three. You're going to have struggle. I don't care how, how much strategy you want to talk. Um, and I, I didn't just guess on that. I called a lot of people throughout the world of baseball. Um, we talked to people that uh, really involved in youth baseball, be at the scholastic level, you know, these huge um, organizations that run big travel ball tournaments all over the country. Uh, I wanted to know about his character, how he handled himself, you know, around those areas. Um, Talked to obviously a lot of people throughout college baseball and had quite a few contacts throughout professional baseball who not only understood what he did with players, but understood how he um, respected the game. And so all those kinds of things together was helped in validating what we were seeing for ourselves. Joe, with the importance of Texas in recruiting for this program, how important was Skip's ties there, and obviously the success that he's had in that state. Well, as you know, Ryan, you know, first and foremost, it starts here in Oklahoma, um, trying to get the best student athletes out of this state. But being a, um, a bordering state to Texas, and obviously uh, being close to a lot of huge areas around Texas, um, that's an important recruiting area for us as well. But when you think about Sooner baseball, we've had big time players that have helped us win championships and get to Omaha over the years that came from a variety of other places. 
around the country. Um, California has been a huge area for us. And as I mentioned, when we talked to people um, that ran a lot of these tournaments, the area code, East Cobb, down in Jupiter, uh, big travel tournaments throughout Texas, you know, it's not just that they were aware of Skip, they knew him. <laughs> they, in fact, actually looked forward to seeing him and, and went out of their way to say that they couldn't name another coach in their memory that was more visible uh, in recruiting times than Skip, that he went out of his way to represent whoever it was that he worked for in a classy way, but to make sure players knew he was there watching and evaluating talent. And then if that met what he was looking for, then recruiting. So you think about those kinds of things that help our programs be successful, you know, they, they make a difference. Skip, how did you find out you Um, yesterday afternoon, I found out that I was getting a job and went through, uh, um, I mean, there's a reason why he's the best, one of the best, he is the best athletic director in the country. I mean, he's detailed. Um, I went through his gauntlet and, uh, answered his questions and went through that and tell him who I, who I was, uh, what I'm about, what kind of program that we're going to lead. And that's when I found out. And after I found out, I was excited. I called Kathy and I called Tyler. Tyler was in Hickory and uh, um, called Ryan. Um, I think uh, uh, then, you know, all of a sudden my phone just starts blowing up. I mean, I got 500 texts, 500 phone calls. Um, it's good. It's a good thing to have. Um, we talked to the players. And it solidified, you know, when we visited with them and he told them and I was the head coach and I got to talk to them. They were, it made me feel good because I'd done something this year that was in their heart and they were all excited. You know, you could hear them screaming and yelling and it was uh, on a conference call. And that was, that's a good sign that uh, uh, they're ready to work. Lincoln Riley took over the football job. He's going to call the plays. He's going to be the quarterback coach. You're taking over as one of the best pitching coaches. They had coaching job at OU. Or are you going to hire a pitching coach? I am hiring a pitching coach, but I'm going to be doing the pitching because he's a dynamic recruiter. I'm going to try to. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Um, yeah, I have. Uh, uh, I wouldn't. The guy that I'm going to try to hire, I can't tell you right now because he's got to go through some uh, stuff. You know, background checks and whatnot, but um, I would want him to teach my son how to pitch. So, uh, um, and he's a dynamic recruiter and a big personality, and that's what I like. I know that. Skip, you mentioned you'd had a chance to talk to your players. Did you get a chance to talk to Devin Perez? And could you gauge his reaction? What he heard when you were coming back? Yeah, I talked to Devin last week when he got drafted, and. Uh, um, well, he was excited, but he was on the conference call. But I haven't, I haven't individually talked to those guys yet, and I will. Uh, that's in the process of doing it um, throughout all the other. And I, I told those guys that uh, you know how I feel, you know how I feel about you. Um, I love each and every one of you. This is going to be the next few days going to be hectic, and just make sure that uh, um, I'll call you guys individually as we go through this. Skip, you talked about your reaction yesterday when you found out you were getting this job. What was your reaction, I guess, what was it, nine, ten days ago when you found out that uh, the job was open? Well, um, it's kind of unique because we were, I was recruiting and I'd been to McKinney. Mike had left to go, go back recruiting. I'd been to McKinney. Then I went to Austin to watch the Texas State tournament. Then I went to uh, uh, Houston to watch some baseball. and. We had two guys were meeting for, uh, uh, we're gonna sell our house and move up here. And we had two guys were meeting to put new appliances, paint it, car put carpet to raise the price on the house and meet a realtor. And I get a call at 11.50 and, uh, uh, from Pete and said they, they let him go. And I was shaking because I, you know, I was like, man, not again. You know, and so uh, uh, there, you know, at that point, I wanted to make sure that they were aware that I was interested in the job. And uh, um, uh, I'm a guy that stays long-term. 
was at Navarro 16 years, and I was at the University of Texas 10 years. So it's not, I'm not going to come in here and leave. And it's who I am. Joe, uh, you were, uh, you seem to express that uh, Skip, to those he's come in contact with, is very memorable. People remember him, and, uh, and they love him. And that won't necessarily put you know, wins on the board, but it sure can't hurt. And how, just how important is to have a coach that is beloved, that does breed that kind of loyalty? Well, the basis of anything we do throughout our athletic program is grounded in our core values. We have ultimate conviction to them, and there is no compromising them. But as you know, part of the core values is being competitive. So we're not um, just talking about the other things without the competitive side. And first and foremost, it's we know in today's world what it takes to recruit, particularly you know the unique deny, dynamics around individual sports. And baseball is has its own interesting dynamics. But obviously, it starts first with those that have an eye for talent, figure out how they could develop talent, they can build relationships to create the belief that this program is the best for them, whether it's with the head coach or you know, assistant coaches or just being around the players, the, the, the whole culture of the program, and getting them to come here. And that, that had to be part of the starting point. Of course, you know, the technical aspects of the game uh, understanding and managing the game. Skip and I talked about all those things you have to do as a head coach that you probably wish you didn't. You know, you'd rather be coaching ball all the time, but you have to deal with all the other things. He's had that experience. He'd been a head coach, you know, before. Had won a national championship before. So it's not new to him. I talked to um, a lot of people in baseball, and I, I know, for example, uh, Coach Garrido talked about how much he relied on him to um, – help build game plans and strategy and uh, handle off the field matters, the academics, the compliance, you know, those kinds of things that go along with being a head coach. So it wasn't just about the relationship part, as important as it is, Clay, it was all, all about managing the whole role as head coach and getting people around him inspired to be excellent. Thank you all for coming. The formal portion of our press conference, media interested in interviewing current OU pitcher Ryan Madden can do that in the back. Um, Brendan Flint from our office will coordinate that. Thank you, everybody.